In this video, I will be explaining some properties of limits and I will be solving two exercises that are applications of these properties. If we have two constants, k and n, and also have two functions such as the limit of fx as x approaches to a and the limit of the other function as x approaches to a at 6, then the following properties hold. First, the limit of a constant will be the constant. So if we are going to compute the limit of 2 as x approaches wherever number, it will be 2. So the limit of every constant will be the same constant. The second property will be if we have a limit of a constant multiplied by a function. If we have something like that, we can get the constant and just get the limit of the function. So the constant multiplied by the limit of the function. This will be the second property. The third property of the limit is in case that we have an addition of subtraction of function. So if we have the limit of a function plus another function, it could be a minus or a plus in the middle of the two functions, as x approaches to a, that will be the limit of the first function. And now, depending on the symbol, if the sign is plus or minus, will be the limit plus or minus the limit of the second function. So if the sign is a plus, there will be a plus. If the sign will be minus, it will be a minus. So it will be plus or minus the limit of the second function. Something similar we have if we have a product of two functions. So as a fourth property, if we have the limit of a product of two functions, the two functions are multiplying and we are going to compute the limit as x approaches to a, what we do is compute the limit of the first function and multiply by the limit of the second function. So again, it will be a similar property of the previous one, but now with the multiplication. And something similar we have when we have a division of two functions, a quotient of two functions. So as a fifth property, we have the limit of a function divided by another function. If we have this, we can compute and both limit a six, we can compute the limit of the first function and divide by the limit of the second function. Obviously, this can be done if this limit at the bottom is different than zero. And sixth property, we have the limit of a power. If we have the limit as x approaches to a of a function to the power n, whatever power, will be the limit of the function to the power n, if this limit is six. So it will be the limit of fx as x approaches to a to the power n. This limit works even in the case when we have limit as x approaches to infinity. Additionally, if we have a constant divided by x to the power n, the limit as x approaches to infinity, it will be zero. If we have a constant at the top and the variable at the bottom can increase without bound, then the limit will be zero. So the limit as x approaches to infinity of k or whatever constant divided by the variable to the power n will be zero. So with this property, we can solve many problems. For example, we can solve this problem. Limit x, x approaches to 2 of 3x squared plus 4 divided by x squared minus 3x. We know that a rational function is continuous. And for that reason, to compute the limit, we can just substitute. If when you make the substitution, the denominator is not zero, so you can actually make a substitution of x by two. But just for practicing how to apply these properties, we are going to solve it in this way. So the limit as x approaches to two of this quotient of function will be the limit of the function at the top divided by the limit of the function of the bottom. This is applying the property five here. The limit of a quotient will be the limit of the 
numerator divided by the limit of the denominator. So applying this property, we can write this. Limit as x approaches to 2 of 3x squared plus 4 divided by the limit of as x approaches to 2 of x squared minus 3x. And this is the limit of a sum at the top, so will be the limit of the first term, just applying property 3. The limit of the sum will be the limit of the first plus the limit of the second. And the same happens at the bottom here, at the denominator. The limit of this expression will be the limit of the first term minus the limit of the second. So applying this, we can write this, this expression in this way. The limit of the first plus the limit of the second terms at the numerator divided by the limit of the first term minus the limit of the second term at the denominator. And now, computing this limit, for example, computing the limit here, computing of 3x squared, we can apply the second property, the constant multiplied by the function, that will be 3 multiplied by the limit of this function. 3 times the limit of x squared, make a substitution of x by 2. So it will be 3 multiplied by 2 squared. And here for the limit of a constant, it will be the property 1. The limit of a constant is the same constant. So here the limit of 4 will be 4. Here the limit of x squared, making a substitution, yes, it will be applying this property. The, the, the limit of x to the power 2 will be 2, the limit of x is 2 to the power 2 will be 2 to the power 2. So the limit of x is 2 to the power that is here again 2. Minus this limit, for example, will be 3 multiplied by the limit of x, by the limit of x as x approaches to 2, will be 2. So with this will be 3 times 2. So I can make a substitution now, yes? 3, 2 to the power 2. Here will be the limit of this is 4. The limit of this will be 2 to the power 2. This limit will be 3 multiplied by 2. Again, using this property, yeah, the constant multiplied by the limit of the function. Okay, so we can solve this. 2 to the power 2 is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 plus 4. And here will be 4 minus 6. And 12 plus 4 is 16 divided by, here is negative 2. And simplifying, we notice that this is negative 8. So that will be the answer of this problem. Okay, as I told you before, that if we have a rational function, making a substitution can compute the limit. If we notice that the denominator is not zero when we make the substitution. So we can actually solve this problem from the beginning immediately. But this is especially important in some other cases. For example, if we have this problem, limit at x approaches to infinity of a rational function. If you have this, it will be a good idea to divide numerator and denominator by the maximum power of the variable the maximum power of x in this case. So in this case, the maximum power of x is x to the power 3. So you can divide numerator and denominator by x to the power 3. And we know that we have a fraction, we can divide by the same expression, numerator and denominator, yes? So that doesn't change the, the fraction. So making this division divided by x to the power 3 is not going to change anything. Obviously, the other question is why we do that? The reason we do that is because we, if we do that, we can use the seventh property here. So when we make the division, sometimes or when we divide by the maximum power of x, sometimes the answer will be a constant. So remember, dividing a polynomial by just one monomial it will be dividing each of the terms of the polynomial by this monomial. So to make this division, we are going to divide 2x to the power 3 divided by x to the power 3. 4x to the power 2 divided by x to the power 3. Minus 3x divided by x to the power 3. So each of the terms at the numerator will be divided by x to the power 3. 
And the same is going to happen at the denominator. Um, sometimes we are going to have just a number, and sometimes we're going to have an expression like this. So that's the reason we divide by x to the power 3. So let's do it. So we divide everything by x to the power 3. So at the bottom we have 4x to the power 3 divided by x to the power 3. Minus 3x divided by x to the power 3. And 2 divided by x to the power 3. Obviously, when we make this division, at the, at the top we, see, we noted that x to the power 3 and x to the power 3 here in the first term cancel. So it will be a 2 only. Here in the second term, the x to the power 2 will be going to cancel, and here it's going to remain 1x at the bottom. In the third term, we are going to cancel this x, and here will appear x to the power 2. So we can do that. We are going to notice that the, at the numerators, all the x are going to be cancelled. So let's see. Here at the top, at the bottom, we will have only a 4 here in the first term. In the second term, we'll have 3 divided by x to the power 2, because this x is going to cancel with one of the, of, the, of the x at the bottom. And here we have 2 to x to the power 3. So let's do it. That will be the limit when x approaches to infinite of 2, this first term is this 2, this second term will be 4 divided by x, you notice here. This next one will be 3 divided by x to the power 2 because this x is going to cancel with one of the x at the bottom. At the bottom we have only 4 at the first term. Here we cancel 1x with x to the power 3. We get 3 divided by x to the power 2 that we write already here, uh, we wrote already here. And finally here we have 2 divided by x to the power 3. But we notice that all the expression will be in this form, like the one in the property 7, and also we have an expression that will be only numbers. And that's what we wanted. We can compute, we can use the properties of the limit. The limit of this will be the limit at the top divided by the limit at the bottom. And if I want to compute the limit at the top, will be the limit of 2, that will be 2, because the first property. This limit of 4 over x, this will be 0, because I am using this property. The limit of a constant divided by x to the power n will be 0 when x approaches to infinite. This happens here also. The li this limit will be 0. The, at the bottom, this 4 remains. There is no x here, but here we have 3 divided by x to the power 2. It will be 0, this limit. And this limit will be 0. So I actually apply, just making abbreviation of my work, but I apply these properties. I was computing the limit of each thing, and the limit of 2 is 2. The limit of 4 is 4. I apply in this property. So I apply in the property of the division when I compute the limit at the top, divided by the limit at the bottom. So I am actually applying the property of a limit, making a shortcut, yeah? so making it faster. OK, so it will be 2 at the top, 4 at the bottom. It will be 2 divided by 4, and this 2 divided by 4 can be simplified. So simplify this number, and we get 1 over 2. And that will be the final answer of this problem. And that concludes my explanation of how to use the properties of limit for making computations of limits. I hope this is clear and useful. Thank you.